know what? The camera's up, so. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. I am Pastor Jenna. Um, I don't think we have any guests or visitors today, but if we do, thank you for joining us this morning. If you're joining us virtually. We are happy to have you with us today, um, and uh, especially it's a little, a little chilly this morning, a little gray, so it's always good to, to gather together and to bask in the light of God. Um, I will be honest, I don't really have any announcements at the, this moment. Is there anything that I need to bring to our attention that you're like, gosh, you gotta, you gotta bring that up? Fantastic. Please read through the print announcements. The midweek class will continue to go out midweek with hard copies being printed out and made available to folks who would like it. Um, so with that, I would invite you to please stand as you are able as we continue with our confession and forgiveness.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another, and we'll take a moment of silence before we continue. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We are sinned against you in God's word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, forgive us, and lead us, so that we may go into the world and walk in your ways. The Lord in your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
to please be seated. And um, I don't know if we have any of our younger folks who would like to come up this morning for a children's message. It's okay if you don't. We, Carol, we do actually have a couple of uh, families at home, though. So if you would, we have a couple of families who are worshiping with us from home. So we've got the Zoom going. Would you be willing to uh, just teach to the congregation? Yes. That's okay. That's okay. I'll be, I can be the kid too if you want me to. I'm happy to do that. <laughs> okay. What color do we have hanging at the altar? Green, yeah. Is it always green? No. Do you know why? Okay. We, the church has liturgical colors for liturgical seasons. Do you remember what color it was on Christmas? On really important days like Christmas and Easter, it's white. During the summer, mostly it's green for Trinity. During Lent, it's purple. During Advent, it's blue. These colors help us to concentrate on the messages that are in the lessons and uh, the pastor preaches on, on the lessons. So it helps us to concentrate on, on God's message to us. Did you know that? Uh, you did not. Well, okay. Now, now everybody knows it. We didn't know it before. Anyway, liturgical colors are important for us. Uh, sometimes the pastor stole is the liturgical color, but her stole has pretty much every color on it. So well, she's all nice. set for the season. I mean, the main one is green, though, right? That's it's right. Green. It's mostly green. Right. <laughs> okay. So um, that's all the message I wanted to share with you. Shall we share a prayer? And maybe the congregation will pray with us. Dear God, Dear God, Dear God. we thank you that you have brought us here together today. We thank you that you have brought us here together today. We thank you that we have a church that reminds us in special ways. We thank you that we have a church that reminds us in special ways. How to worship you appropriate to the season. How to worship you appropriate to the season. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Ms. Carol. <coughs> Our first reading this morning is from Psalm 1. Please join me in reading responsively. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's teaching They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, the way you to please stand as you are able for the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their disciples. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. 
Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Beloveds of God, grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. How many of you here are familiar with how vision works, like generally, like how like the image is processed? Oh, awesome. Cool. Then this will be new for all of you, too. So I was... I, I like, you know, I like to kind of have a tie-in with the gospel, and one of the things that I was trying to think of this week is how things that seem upright are really upside down, or things have to be upside down for them to work properly, and I've learned that the way that our brain processes what we see is that it, like, the image comes in inverted. So, like, what we're all looking at right now, it actually is inverted in the optical nerve as it comes in and then our brains like put it in a way that like we can see so for us it all looks up right now but how it works um, with the, within the nervous system is that it's all flipped as it comes in and then turned right side up inside our like our brain synapses and then that's what like what we're seeing is what our brain is telling us what we're seeing so, really, our brain takes something that is upside down and makes it right. And this is one of the things that we're dealing with in the Beatitudes this morning. And I have to be honest, I really struggle with the Beatitudes, not because I think they're bad or wrong, but because I never quite know how to locate myself in them. Like, I... I'm well fed, a little, little, little too well fed some days. I am housed, I am deeply loved. My tears of grief and mourning are situational and usually short lived. I have lots of joy and laughter in my life. I don't exist on the margins of society. I'm generally well liked and my presence is usually welcomed. What do I know of these blessings as Jesus has shared them? And so it makes me wonder how should I feel with this gospel? What do those of us who find ourselves in the same boat, a boat that I would argue most, if not all of us here are in? Do we wallow in guilt or romanticize poverty, avoid joy, happiness, fulfillment, full bellies? When we look to Jesus, look to how he was already showing the way to everlasting life, his very way of existing shows us that God desired and desires healing, wholeness, and alleviating pain and suffering every way possible. Right? Like, he has just come down off of this mountain where he has chosen his 12 apostles from the multitude of his disciples. And power was flowing from Jesus. Right? This gospel starts with people being healed 
of demons and bad and ill spirits being cast out just by Jesus' very presence. That power that is coming off of Jesus was all about healing and restoring those who had come for help. And I think one of the reasons I struggle with this text is because my brain, in seeing what's before me, it wants to keep things inverted. And it wants me to interpret this as being prescriptive. So that to be the blessed one, I have to suffer. As though pain and suffering in themselves are redemptive acts. Or that if I am not blessed, then I must be cursed, right? We like we often interpret the woe is as a curse. It's not really a curse. Because the, the blessings and woes that Jesus names are the truth of how the world worked and still works. And it's how God's kingdom and God's economy repeatedly turn it all upside down. Or... Maybe God turns it right side up. When we look to the Roman world order, we're looking at some world history here, the wealthy literally and figuratively owned the kingdom. Being held in high regard was, and was as essential as the air they breathed. To mourn and grieve was pitiable and to be hidden and avoided at all costs. In the Roman kingdom, the only value the least of the least had was in making the wealthy and well-fed and powerful people even wealthier and more well-fed and more powerful. So we have these great multitudes of people who had eagerly waited all night for Jesus. They waited at the base of that mountain to see what this unexpected teacher would say and do next. This complete turning upside down of world order was absolutely the next wild and crazy thing that they had been waiting to see. The world tries to tell us that power and wealth and happiness and, you know, insert whatever passing economic good thing here are what we're supposed to strive for. That's what makes sense. That's what we're supposed to see. And it comes in and our brain flips it and that's the right way of things. That's how it's supposed to be. And that if we don't have those things, we are failing and unworthy of love and attention and care. But the kingdom of God says and is the opposite of that world order. Blessed, blessedness does not equal happy or even content. In scripture, to be blessed by God doesn't always look or feel like a happy thing. To be hungry is not a happy thing. But in the kingdom of God, everything is turned upside down or turned right side up we want to continue with that vision metaphor because it is the new vision of the new world order that God has revealed in Jesus Christ. It is the way the world is supposed to be. Professor Sarah Heinrich writes that the blessings are promises to those who are suffering in this world that God still sees them, loves them, and is intent and they're thriving. Jesus' words are also warning calls to his hearers. They are called to live with attention and generosity toward their neighbors, even as God is attentive and generous. So those woes, they're not a curse, but a warning to pay attention. There was this really wonderful quote from theologian and writer Frederick Buechner, um, if any of you are familiar with his stuff. His last name is spelled B-U-E-C, 
C-H-N-E-R. So if you've ever seen some things around, you know, um, writings around spirituality and reflection, um, I learned it's not pronounced Buchner, it's pronounced Buchner. And he just has this wonderful take on Jesus' wildness and craziness um, and how it just flies in the face of the world's so-called sanity, so-called right side up. He says, the world says, mind your own business. And Jesus says, there is no such thing as your own business. The world says, follow the wisest course and, um, sorry, wisest course and be a success. And Jesus says, follow me and be crucified. The world says law and order, and Jesus says love. The world says get, and Jesus says give. In terms of the world's sanity, Jesus is crazy as a coop, and anybody who thinks that he can follow him without being a little crazy too is laboring under a cross, less under a cross than under a delusion. Jesus inverts what the world says is actually the right way up so that things really are the way they're supposed to be. So that that image that comes in and our brain flips back up, it is in Christ that that writing up of things can happen. It is when we look at the world through the lens of Christ, through the lens of things as challenging as the Beatitudes, something that, I don't know, maybe I'm the only one that this makes uncomfortable, but it does. It challenges and it convicts, and it forces me to see things right side up in a way that doesn't always feel the best for me. But God tells us again and again and again, that what is good for the whole body of Christ is good for the whole body of Christ. And it is in this writing up, this insanity by reason of the world, that is the absolute basis of what we are called to live and see and breathe and do as God's beloved Jesus invites us into this new world order. But you gotta be a little crazy to join in, so it's a good thing we're all here, huh? Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to please turn to hymn number 470.
gathered as the beloved body of Christ, we confess our faith in God through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Blessed are those whose trust is in you. Strengthen the faith of those who profess your name and bring reassurance to those who doubt or fear. Through your church, speak continued blessing into the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Those who trust in you are like trees planted by streams of water. Bless fruit trees with an abundant harvest. Protect rainforests from destruction. Restore land that has eroded after de deforestation. Resurrect woodlands after forest fires. God of grace, hear our prayer. Search the hearts of those who govern, that they lead with humility. Inspire leaders to collaborate on policies that protect people and the planet. Sustain truth tellers and social movements that challenge society to become more honest and just. God of grace, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Send your blessings of mercy upon those who long for consolation. Tend to those who struggling with poverty, unemployment, or uncertainty. Provide for all who are hungry. Console those who face persecution. Grant peace to, the, to all who suffer. Bring healing to all who are in need of it, especially Jillian Flesh as she recovers from eye surgery and Sue Polkowski as she receives care for ongoing medical needs. God of grace. Renew this congregation in our shared mission. As we plan and dream for the future you are preparing, inspire us by the examples of Martin Luther and all the reformers. Bless new projects and new ministry partnerships. Keep us energized and motivated as we build up your kingdom. God of grace, Christ is raised from the dead, and so we cling to the hope of the resurrection. We praise you for the lives of the saints who lived and died in the hope of eternal life with you, especially Carl. God of grace, since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And all those of you. I invite you to share a sign of that peace with one another, remembering not everybody wants to get super close yet. Or
lives as you are able. For all the ways in which we give, let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts. For ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. To the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, mighty, and merciful God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who, on the cross, opened his arms to all. On the night when she was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant shed in my blood for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered together as one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. to God's table, there is a place for you and enough for all. Please be seated. We continue our practice of um, being dismissed one uh, side at a time. Um, it, we have the baskets at the end of the front, uh, front rows for you to dispose of your uh, empty communion cups in them. And if you do not wish to receive communion today, that's okay. Um, I will offer a blessing if you come up with your arms crossed. Um, I will ask if you'd like to receive that today. All are, all are welcome at God's table.
those of you communing with us from home, this is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. I invite you to please rise as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Dear ones, as we go now from this time of worship, God goes with us and before us and sends us with this blessing. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Amen. We sing our sending hymn, 723. 